So welcome to the 16th in a series of free webinars hosted by the Chamber of Commerce under the theme, Supporting Businesses in a Time of Crisis. I'm Will Pineau, I'm the CEO of the Chamber. The topic of this webinar is moving your business from brick to, and mortar to e-commerce. And today we are partnering with Cayman Gateway Limited. The objective of this uh, session is to provide businesses and individuals with expert information on how to expand your business operations to e-commerce and how to start a new business online in response to the changing realities and emerging opportunities of the COVID-19 world. The session will also provide guidance on how to set up an, uh, an online payment portal. Our presenter for today's session is Derek Fair, Director and Chief Executive Officer of Cayman Gateway Limited. A graduate of the University of Windsor, Derek Fair is the founder and CEO of Cayman Gateway. He is an experienced business development and marketing professional with a proven success record with such companies as Bank of Montreal and Cable and Wireless. Before I turn over to Derek, let me remind you that you may submit questions during the presentation via the chat feature. There will also be the usual question and answer segment at the end of the presentation, at which time Derek and a team of personnel representing the various banks will respond to your questions. Derek will introduce the team of persons who will be assisting him during the question and answer segment. So again, we'll be taking your questions during that segment, the question and answer segment, and there is a raised hand feature at the bottom of your screen which allows you to indicate you if you wish to ask a question, at which time we'll bring up you up on the screen as well as unmute your microphone if that's what you'd like. You're also free to put your question in the chat and I as moderator will ask the question for you. So I'd like to thank you for participating in this uh, session and I hope you find it useful. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Derek to lead us through the presentation. Thank you, Will. Excuse me just for a moment, I just spilled my water. Bear with me. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'd like to thank Will Pinnell and the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce for inviting us here today to discuss moving our businesses from brick and mortar to e-commerce in a time of crisis. Uh, joining with me uh, is our VP of Technology, uh, through Gorontala. He will answer all questions involving technical acronyms. I will uh, dismiss myself. I'll also introduce a few members from the banking community who will be uh, maybe available to answer any questions regarding uh, setting up our merchant account for e-commerce. A business account and a merchant account are necessary if you want to sell your services in an online e-commerce environment. Uh, firstly, uh, Rene Lopez from uh, Butterfield Bank is here joining us. Uh, we also have Mr. Mike Belfort from Scotiabank. And I believe Jamil Welcome uh, from RBC has joined us and Karen Wharton from RBC in Toronto. Okay, uh, most of us would agree that COVID-19 is a global health crisis and has had a shattering ripple effect on businesses worldwide and here in the Cayman Islands. However, today I'd like to discuss the opportunities, not the crisis. As a direct result from COVID, some of us had to close our businesses, isolate or work from home, while still bearing the cost of the business in the form of salaries, leases, insurance, and other related costs. I think it's fair to say that the hardest hit came to those brick and mortar businesses which depend on traffic in the store. Now we have to accept a new normal, adapt and innovate. One of those ways is doing uh, business online. I'll share with you five reasons why we should be selling online. <laughs> You'll instantly increase your sales opportunity. Uh, the convenience given to order online and have products delivered straight to their door. Two, you can make your business, you can market your business better. Uh, the most effective forms of marketing now are generally done via the internet. That means that having a website which you can sell from directly can be a huge advantage. Three, it can increase customer retention. 
It's interesting. Uh, some research from Bain and Company found that a 5% increase in customer retention can account for 75% increase in profits. It's a very important point. Number four, it can save you money. You can spend, uh, you can, uh, you don't have to spend money on uh, extra so storage, displays, logistics, and other parts of that process. Also staff costs. Number five, it helps you beat out your competition. Any retailer that doesn't allow customers to buy from them online will be outdated. It's that simple. Okay, so I'm gonna, I put together a little presentation I'm just gonna share with you and feel free to, uh, as, as Will said, uh, post any of your questions on the, on the chat line here. Okay, supporting business in a time of crisis, COVID-19 and the e-commerce landscape. Isolation and uncertainty. During this period of isolation and uncertainty, we've experienced almost overnight changes to shopping behaviors. From bulk buying, you see that with the toilet paper, to online shopping, people are changing what, when, and how they shop. Okay, we, so we need to adapt and innovate. Uh, and it, it's very simple. Uh, the first box we see here is uh, bricks to clicks. That's, we, need to, we need to move from our brick and mortar way of doing business uh, in, in our culture to uh, providing a, a convenient, easy way for people to not only shop here in these islands, but for the, throughout the rest of the world. Uh, and I don't know if you've, uh, many people, if you, if you visit here and you go back home, you know, buying that, that uh, whatever it is you wanted to buy whilst you were here and getting it back, buying it from home is almost an impossibility and certainly very expensive. That doesn't have to be like that. Um, BOPIS, that is buying online, paying in store. That's curbside delivery. So we see a lot of that happening now. So many of us are starting to adapt and innovate. And pivoting the products. We've got to put out there what people want. So we've got it, and, and selling online gives us that flexibility to do so. Uh, we can put online what we have in stock, uh, any new stock, and that's a fairly simple process to go through. All right, now here's some, some quick stats for you. 73% of our online retailers, and I got this from the US, are running sales. Now, most of the sales that I've been uh, accustomed to here it's 10%. Everything was 10%. It's been 10% for decades. Um, but now we have to change that way of marketing and, and offering sales. 40% is the median discount, not the standard 10%. 90% offer free delivery. I know of a case in uh, Hawaii where people sell a little tube of coconut oil for $50, uh, which probably cost them a dollar and a half to make uh, and package. Uh, but because they said free shipping on it, it became a very enticing product to purchase from Hawaii. Well, the Cayman Islands uh, is just as attractive as Hawaii is to the rest of the world. Growth potential. COVID-19 will forever change retailing and its initial impact on e-commerce is creating opportunities to online selling uh, and, and service no one imagined in January. According to Forbes, there's been 129% year-on-year growth in U.S. and Canadian e-commerce market orders, and as of April 21st, uh, an impressive 146% on growth. That's huge. Okay, so what are some other benefits that we can that we can experience with the uh, e-commerce? Well, we streamline our payments and collections. Uh, that's also very important. We're a very transient island. People come and go, and and they often leave debt. This gives uh, people a, an easy, convenient opportunity to pay those debts and, and not get, you know, have to wire us the money or send a check. Uh, we can simply send them that, uh, that invoice and they can pay directly wherever they happen to be on the planet. Uh, you know, you're, you, you wanna have a virtual terminal and invoicing module, be able to provide payment plans or memberships or subscriptions. So these payments just happen automatically, whether that be on a monthly or quarterly or annually basis. Uh, we need to be able to sell in dual currency uh, and we need to be able to do that one to go into our KYD account and one to go into our US account if, if that's the way we want to sell our services. 
We can remove a lot of the administrative overhead of running these cards, by the way, which we should not be holding on to card data whatsoever, uh, but it happens. Uh, and some people spend weekends just running cards. Uh, we um, eliminate payment error costs. Uh, you know, it's, you enter in a, you know, a dirty data, you enter in some wrong numbers, which is human error. Uh, and I mentioned the reduced age debt. Uh, we can execute effectively on international growth. So the time that we would be spending doing those other things, we can now market our company and our products to the rest of the world. It doesn't have to just be here in, in the Cayman Islands. Uh, and we also have some flexibility with some mobile apps that are available online in the, on the, on the iStore or uh, Play Store or the, uh, the iStore. Okay, I get this question a lot. What is a payment gateway? What is that in this whole e-commerce thing? Well, quite simply, uh, I'm just gonna let this person in, excuse me. So quite simply, a payment gateway is a conduit between somebody who makes the, the purchase and, uh, and how it gets settled into your bank account. So it does not sit in a PayPal account if you happen to be using PayPal. Uh, it does not sit in a foreign bank. We want, if we want to go shopping at Kirk's or Hurley's or Foster's tomorrow, we want that money to be sitting in our bank account. So I'll just go through this rather quickly. Uh, so it starts up here. So the encrypted data is sent from the online purchase uh, and authenticates the customer's digital credentials, right? The gateway then sends the transaction details to the payment processor. Uh, in this case, uh, we, we use uh, Fiserv or FDMS and RBC has their, their own processor, okay? Uh, then for subscriptions, we see down here that uh, that's held in a sales vault so that those transactions can occur on the same day. If it's a monthly uh, payment plan, it'll come out the same day each time uh, in that month and for that annual plan, for, for an example. And then it goes to the payment processor, right? The payment processor then, if the transaction is approved to the processor, sends the details to the acquiring bank, which holds the business merchant account. The approval or the not approval results are sent back to the payment gateway, and then the uh, payment gateway, us, uh, inform the, the, the merchant and the customer uh, of the approved or declined transaction. So I'm sure there may be some questions uh, about that afterwards. And let me just, um, so search engine result, result pages. Well, how do I get people to come to my website? Uh, what are people looking for generally? So that's what's called uh, SEO, that's search engine optimization. And we can talk about that at a later time, but that's how, those are key words for your business that when people are on Google, they can search for, and you want the, your name to come up, or at least be one of the top 10 uh, that come up in those, those results. So since COVID, we've seen a, a change in the way people are searching for things. So we see books and literature, obviously people are more isolated. Uh, they're, they're, gonna, they're bound to be Googling more, more of this, this kind of leisure activity, hobbies and leisure people in society. Uh, we also have a lot of business, beauty and fitness. People want to make themselves look better when, when the restrictions are relaxed. It's just something to think about. Okay, the new normal. Since most of us are trying to implement social distancing, more people are now shopping online for a growing number of new product categories. So it has not just been about a rapid rise in online purchases, but about the nature of that demand. Who can adapt and innovate? Now, this will be unique to, to uh, each person's business or industry, uh, but I can say in, in our experience, we, you know, and I'll just go through some of the people who have already started to adapt and innovate and well before pre-COVID. Uh, uh, pre so we got retail, some examples here, Blackbeards, uh, Kim Distributors, Yellow, Island Companies, uh, Wellness, Quintessential, Island Naturals, Da Vinci Center, Adrian Dumas, Fitness, F45. So a lot of these fitness companies have uh, payment plans uh, where you pay monthly. Seven Mile Strength and Fitness, Anytime Fitness, Purple Dragon, a lot of these companies uh, many people are familiar with. Service, Andro and Polar Bear, they're, they're two good examples of service and using the mobile apps because these people are out on the road all the time and they need to be able to take a 
take payment for the service that they're providing on the road as in at when they provide it. Uh, this is an easy, simple, effective, and efficient way to do business. Uh, canine and green turtle. Nonprofits, we've got loads of those. Jasmine, Meals on Wheels, Special Needs, and our very own Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce. Tourism, uh, which has taken a huge hit. Um, so now we've got Casa Crib, Blue Ocean, Plantation Village, Ocean Frontiers as some examples. And what I think is very important, education. So here at the University College of the Cayman Islands, students can now register online. They cannot now pay online. They can, uh, they can pay for their, the services, extra services, all online, whether they're here or abroad. That is the way education is, is going uh, in North America and Europe, and we ought to be able to do, which we are here as well. And I put the Cayman Islands, the Cayman Turtle Center there as well, because that's an education center. And um, these are very important um, uh, companies to have uh, adapting and, uh, and educating our, our people here and abroad. So maybe I'll take this moment here to uh, take a few questions uh, for anyone, and then I'll just give you an example of uh, some examples of uh, some of these companies and show you their websites and show you the gateway itself. So, well, Derek, let's uh, let's just go right through go right through the presentation, and we can accept questions right at the end. It keeps it easier. Okay, sure. Okay, so I'm just gonna. I'm going to show people what a payment gateway is. So right now, this is what we call our virtual terminal. And this would be your virtual business. Uh, uh, this isn't your website. That is something different. And I'll show you that after this. But this would be something uh, that you would see in your business and, and how you manage all the transactions that occur in your business. Uh, as an example, we're, we're all familiar with the POS machines, the Verifones that, uh, that we get from the banks. Uh, this is just a virtual representation of that. Uh, so if I'm uh, purchasing shoes, and here we could have the particular category of shoes, the types of shoes, uh, and maybe it's, you know, very $200 shoes. Uh, and again, the dual currency that we can uh, accept my name in here uh, with my email and go ahead and proceed to pay. Now, the important thing of this about this is that that is going to bring us to what is a payment page. This looks directly into your bank account, which your merchant account provides you once the banks provide this. Okay. So you can either swipe the card, and for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to test card here. And I'm going to accept this payment. Oh, sorry, my reward, I'm sorry. We've introduced a reward uh, number here. So some companies like to give, the, it's a very important point, give their customers reward points for shopping with them. So I'll, I'll give you an example and I'm just gonna call this turtle points. Okay, so this customer is now gonna make that purchase and they know they're gonna get some turtle points. The transaction is approved. So that transaction now will most likely get settled at midnight every night and you'll, you'll see it in your bank account uh, hopefully by uh, mid-afternoon the next day. Uh, it could be another business day. So if I just continue here, so the point being is it happens rather quickly. I can see that this, this customer, Derek, may purchase some shoes for $200 and it happened at this time. This is what me, the merchant, is seeing on my end. 
the customer is going to, if I get into the, receive an email receipt with branded with your company name, thanking him for the order and getting the receipt for shoes for $200. Fair enough? Oh. So here I have full visibility of all my transactions. No matter how many locations I have. And I also have full refund ability. So if that $200 just happened to be a $150 pair of shoes, but we charge them full price, we can go ahead and refund that customer automatically, even before it gets to the It's a very powerful tool to have to be able to refund automatically. So there we can see the refund. Now, I also have a full visibility of the day's transactions. So I can see what we've, what we've taken in KYD and USD and USD to KYD uh, using the exchange rate that, that you prefer and then our total in revenue. Okay. Now I can look down here and, and see how many transactions. I can also look at it by yesterday what's happened this week, what's happened last week, uh, this month as an example, and last month. So I can see what the trends are and, and take a look. So I, I can see here, well, this is an anomaly. What happened on the, on the 28th or the 29th? Uh, we've got a huge sale on that day. So it, it gives us an easy to understand representation of what's going on with our business at any given time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're a very transient island. Not all of our customers are here. Uh, not all of our invoices will be local. We need an easy way to get that invoice to the customer and a convenient way for that customer to pay wherever they may be. So um, I'm going to um, Will Pano's beard stylist. Uh, I'm going to have to pay for that stylist. I'm going to have to pay $5,000 uh, if I want a beard just like Will Pano. And I, maybe I have an internal uh, invoice that I want to attach to it. Maybe it's a QuickBooks invoice. I can attach that invoice right there. And I'm going to play the, the role of the customer again. Uh, but this time I'm in Japan. Uh, and I just need to be able to simply create that invoice. Now we can also bulk load customers uh, into the back end and do that mass email to all of our customers uh, as, as some of our, our merchants do. So now the customer in Japan, me the customer in Japan, should have received this invoice that quickly. I can see that I've got an invoice here of $5,000 for some beard trimming, some beard styling. I can see the details of that attachment we've included. Now that could be in the form of product descriptions um, or uh, your own internal invoice. Now, me in Japan, I have an easy, convenient way to make that payment and have that payment directly go to your bank account. points, I forgot those. Uh, and again, now the customer will receive a receipt. They can print out the receipt. I can go back to my transactions. List, sorry. And 
I can see that this person has paid $5,000 for the invoice. Now, in some cases, maybe uh, the person has, we've sent out the invoice, but they haven't yet paid. So we know they've received the invoice, but they haven't paid. So we can quite simply go ahead and resend the invoice. Okay. And again, full visibility of all the transactions. All right, so now I, I often get asked about the payment plans or subscriptions. Um, and this is uh, useful, as I mentioned, in, in a lot of our fitness centers, uh, in insurance, uh, for maintenance contracts, uh, whatever it may be. It's something that recurs over a period of time. And instead of having to run those transactions ourselves, we just want that to be automatic. So bear with me a moment and I will just show you how easy it is to create our own payment plans because business is dynamic and we need to be flexible and we need to be able to create these pricing plans that we have in a seamless, effective, quick way. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen again. All right. So again, this would be have your logo and, and your look and feel. Uh, and in this, in the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and create a pricing plan. Okay. And I'm going to call it uh, the chamber. Um, COVID plan, uh, COVID donation, I guess. Now here, this could be a one-time plan. Maybe it's an Easter event or a Christmas event. Uh, in this case, we'll just use recurring. Uh, and then, well, how often do we want that customer to make those payments, right? In this case, let's just use the monthly example. Uh, and this person's going to donate $150 a month for the next year. Um, so the terms here are going to be for 12 months. And we're going to create that plan. So that is how quick we've created a, a pricing plan for our company. So we didn't have to go to an outside source. We didn't have to go to a, a web developer and we didn't have to go uh, through IT. Um, this is something we could do because we just had that thought in the middle of the night. And as you can see, we've got lots of plans. Right now that we've created that, that plan, okay, here we go, the COVID-19 relief payment plan. We need to add customers to that plan. So maybe we've got existing customers or maybe this is a brand new plan that we want to go ahead and add to all of our customers. So for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna add myself and be a new customer to that payment plan. So I'm gonna add myself as a, as a member. Okay, and I've created a member. So that now the customer, I'm gonna log in as the customer, what the customer will see. And again, your customers don't have to be local, they can be anywhere. There was my receipt for the previous one. So this would come from the Chamber of Commerce in this example, payment portal. So now I wanna be a member, uh, I can go ahead and click here and it's gonna ask me for my own secure password. So I know all the details that I put in, in this payment portal is gonna be secured by me, the customer. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here and if that will be my login will be my unique email address. And then my password. Now 
Now I've logged in to this payment portal because I want to take advantage of this plan and that donation. So I can go ahead and put in my credit card details. and my card was approved. So now, if I log back in to the merchant portal, I can see that Derek Fair has completed his registration, but we haven't assigned him a plan yet because we couldn't assign him a plan until he's added his, his payment credentials. Because if we, if we provide a service or a product prior to payment, then a lot of times we end up chasing up for that payment and we don't want to be put in that position. So I'm now you can see I can go ahead and assign that plan. And I believe it was the very last plan that we, the COVID, COVID donation. And here I have an option which is uh, very powerful as well. We can auto renew because more times we want to put the onus on the customer to, uh, to stop their, their, plan, their payment plan. But mo most customers just want to keep renewing uh, for the oncoming years as gym membership, or in this case, donation. I want to keep donating beyond this year. Uh, we can add discounts. If it was an existing plan, we could say that this started three months prior. Therefore, this annual pricing plan would end in nine months. Uh, that's not the case today. Uh, so here the billing start date will be today. Okay. I'm joining this plan today because we just thought of it. Uh, the plan end date will be next year uh, in June. Uh, and the purpose is donation. And that's how quickly I've added that pricing plan. So now the customer will get notified that they are now on this chamber donation payment plan. The money will come out, that $150 will come out today and subsequently for the next 11 months on this day. Okay. And that's all we need to do about that. Here we can go ahead and we can freeze members. So you, we've got a lot of snowbirds here. Maybe uh, some people are leaving for six months and we just, they, they, they don't wanna to continue to pay for those six months, but we don't wanna lose them as a donor. So we can just freeze them uh, for six months. Uh, we can go ahead and, and look at the customer's details, uh, look at their payment methods. Uh, we can, for instance, if um, this person says, uh, you know, I'd like to put in an additional $1,000 uh, this month as a donation for the cause. We can automatically, and this is uh, me forgetting my mouse here. Uh, we can go ahead and just do a miscellaneous payment, $1,000. Uh, in this case, it was KYD, uh, top up. And that's how quickly we've done that. Now we can, we have different currencies. We, in other jurisdictions, we can manage taxes. We can bulk load members. Uh, in some cases, we've got merchants who have, you know, 1,200, uh, 1200 customers that we can bulk load in the back end. Uh, we can look at the, the customer's history, their plan history. Okay. So, uh, in the interest of time, I'm just going to uh, actually take this moment and show you a few websites uh, that, uh, a few examples. Uh, let's just take a look at uh, on the subject of donations. So here's the Jasmine website. 
So if somebody wants to go ahead and donate, again, wherever they happen to be, uh, and here, they, got, they can donate in USD or KYD. They have their option of what to pay. Uh, they can, in this case, in loving memory of whomever. Uh, and then, of course, their payment details. Okay. Uh, another good example is Plantation Village. Um, so traditionally, how we used to um, accept payments here, and it was you know, historically acceptable, is people would mail us a check or they would have to wire the money. Well, that's just not good enough in most cases and it can be expensive. So they wanted an easy way, in this case, you know, for the Strata members, to just go ahead and pay online, and it's done. Okay, uh, I'll use the UCCI example. Um, so if students need to come in and pay for general fees, as an example, or their student ID fee, which is already preloaded, uh, the, the prices are already preloaded from us, they can go ahead and enter in their card details and make that payment. They can register for classes. Uh, I'll show you a um, shopping cart example. The Cayman Cigar Company. Uh, here's a COVID-19 announcement. Uh, here we could uh, log into their, their, their website. Uh, scroll down, uh, but in this case, we want to go to the store. Uh, we want to buy uh, a cigar. I've already added some cigars. We want to add it to the cart. We want to view the cart. And we also, uh, a side note, now here, you know, would we like to leave a gratuity? Well, if we're, in, in this case, we know that uh, the shop owners aren't not getting any traffic in, in the store. So maybe we want to leave the people who are doing the handling of the product a little gratuity ahead of time uh, because it, they're offering us free delivery after all. So maybe it's $5. So we go ahead and submit that payment, right? And then we just simply proceed to checkout. Now, in some cases, there's shipping. So we could, uh, we have a DHL plugin uh, where we can add the, the shipping uh, address as well into the card API. So uh, Thero wants me to make mention of three important, we have three APIs. So uh, one is the hosted payment page, which I showed you uh, for Jasmine. Uh, this is a direct uh, uh, API in this WordPress site for the Cayman Cigar Company. Uh, and then we've got a three step uh, and uh, you know 3D. So when somebody makes a payment, it, um, you know, the, the, the person who's purchasing, it's an extra validation and they'll get a code sent to them if the merchant, if the card issuing bank decides they need to do that, just to confirm that that person making the purchase is indeed that, uh, the person making the purchase. And here we just go ahead and we place the order. Okay. Uh, there's plenty of more, but hopefully that gives you an appreciation um, for uh, what what you can have available, what's available to you now. Uh, and with that, I, I will, uh, I guess we've got 16 questions or comments, so maybe we'll just, uh, I hope that was helpful and useful. Uh, and um, I look forward to meeting all of you personally. Well, so thank you, Derek, very much for the presentation. We can look through the chat questions. Some of them, I think, have been answered already through the different people. But let me kick off the questions a little bit so we get right to the nub of it. Um, some of the challenges has always been, I think, from the banking community in Cayman. And I think we have a lot of the banks on, on team right now. So can you confirm, Derek, which, which banks does Cayman Gateway actually work with right now Sure. And, uh, and, and that process by which it takes for people to establish a merchant account through a bank. Okay, so you need to have a bank account, uh, a business account, a corporate account 
uh, with Scotiabank or Butterfield Bank. Uh, and we're happy to introduce RBC, uh, which is coming uh, very soon, uh, as another one of our merchant acquirers. With that corporate account, uh, and with me on, on, on this call is Renee and, and Mike from Butterfield and, and, and Scotiabank, who are the merchant account managers, who will manage, uh, they manage the onboarding of the e-commerce account, which provides that merchant account. Once that account is, is provided, I then provision uh, with the processor uh, and integrate the, the payment gateway, whether that be to the website or if they're using the virtual terminal and the invoicing module, which I showed earlier. It's, uh, it's that account from which all of those online sales can go into your business account. So maybe Mike uh, and Renee can kind of go through, I'll talk, start with Renee, I'll unmute his mic and he can kind of explain maybe the process with Butterfield to begin. Sure. Thanks, Will, um, and thank you, Derek, and uh, Will, for having me here today. It's very, very exciting times that we're in right now. Um, the process is uh, kind of like what Derek said. Once the first step is to make sure that you have a business account. Once you have your business account and it's opened with the bank, you can apply for your e-commerce account. And essentially, what that is is um, it's a merchant ID that we create here, our, uh, we create with our payment processor. And we, once that is created, we give that over to Derek and he does the integration from his end. There, are, there is requirements and um, some restrictions for e-commerce accounts. When we talk to potential clients, we give, that, we give them that information in an email. Then maybe Mike, is it Mike, is it any different from your bank or is it pretty much the same procedure? Pretty much the same procedure. Uh, welcome all, welcome all participants. Yeah, it's the same procedure with uh, Scotia as is with pretty much all the other banks. They have to have operating accounts with the bank, whether, whether or not that is small business and or corporate commercial. Once they have the operating accounts, then I provide the ancillary service of merchant services, which can include e-commerce, um, merchant services. Um, for us, we send a e-commerce merchant questionnaire that is completed with the assistance of the third-party payment gateway, which is a Cayman gateway, as well as with a web developer. Once they fill that out and complete that, we then vet it and then they get approval and then we proceed on. Uh, the whole process with us would probably take about, uh, it can be anywhere from a week to two weeks. For that whole okay, process. That, that's good news. I mean, because again, I've heard complaints from small businesses in particular that sometimes those processes can be delayed. But it sounds as though, from what you're telling me, if you get all the information submitted, mm -hmm. it, it's not as difficult as some people may believe. Yeah, no, so we, that's a good point. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, no, we, we, yeah. So once, once the customer has all the information and they're well versed in the process, and we really don't have to, how can I say, revisit or do what we just did here with Derek for an hour or so, then it's pretty much, it's pretty much uh, cut and paste. Right, and then there'll be a bank fee charge, and then obviously Cayman Gateway or any other gateways have their right. own charge, so that'll be added on to any transaction, I guess. But that's standard yes. for the industry anyway. So. But again, are you seeing, I'm just talking to the banks now, are, are you seeing a take up of e-commerce generally? I mean, Cayman has been a slow adopter of e-commerce. Now, some people have blamed the banks for that. Some people have blamed whatever the blame is. I just think we want to move ahead. So do you yes. think people are now, now coming to the table and meeting with you guys and trying to get their business online? Oh, yeah. We've, we've seen a lot of... Um... Uh, a lot of inquiries lately, uh, lately within the last couple of weeks, people applying for e-commerce accounts. Um, Will, just to touch on that a little bit, I think Cayman community as a whole has been a little behind on, on ordering stuff online and, you know, getting the goods delivered to their site. Um, it's a trend that we, we need to look, uh, we need to start moving forward with as a community on the whole. I think it's a good opportunity for all of the brick and mortar stores to, to get their e-commerce account up and running. It's a good point, uh, Renee. And I, I, if I may, I, 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 might, I wanna add that, you know, we are more than just a payment gateway. We have to be. Uh, we, uh, as a company, as a, as a local company, we, we strive to be a mentor for a lot of our businesses, which is, 
We help them with their bank account documents, uh, which we've been quite successful in doing. We help them with their business plan, which is a requirement uh, for the e-commerce account, uh, and, and help them get onboarded and try to eliminate that fear factor that seems to be there. Um, and uh, again, to make that transition go a lot smoother than uh, traditionally anticipated. I think the, the, the concern now is with all of the alphabet soup of regulations that we have going on around the world and due diligence and compliance and everyone's scared, scared about virtually anything that happens. Um, I guess maybe the banks, you guys have to follow certain procedures for compliance, I understand. But maybe you can kind of give people on this call, is there any um, advice that you have about that compliance requirement? Well, well, from from our aspect, from uh, Scotiabank's aspect, the the important thing is the operating accounts. So once you get past that hurdle, or if you already have operating accounts with us or with any other bank, um, then it's not a difficult process. Uh, the processor, the third party processor, which is Derek, uh, the web developer, ninety percent of them have already done have been down this road. So it's not a difficult a difficult thing for them. What I find is that a lot of folks that do come from the small business aspect come into this really blind. They haven't contacted a third party payment gateway. They haven't contacted a web developer. They tend to do it, they want to do it on their own. I think some of the fear may be the costing of it, but the costing from the web development and from the third party payment gateway is fairly, uh, what I say is very, very reasonable. And from the bank's aspect, we just charge a percentage on each transaction. So therefore, if you do business, we make a little money, the third party payment gate makes money and the customer makes money. But if they're not doing any business, then basically it's not really a major cost to them. Um, so, so that is very good news. I don't think a lot of the small business customers um, know that. And what they try to do is they try to do this all on their own. And some, and some customers are just not as, as, as equipped or not as knowledgeable in the process. So I strongly recommend that they contact Derek, they contact the web developer, they put those two together. Um, it should not be any any cost to them to get answers for the. So once they have that, the banking is banking. So that's not going to change no matter which bank you go with. And what 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 do you think would be um, what would be concerning to you as online transactions? I mean, obviously every business has some standard transactions that uh, you would probably report to the bank. Uh, things that would be normal. I mean, at the end of the day you know, it's, it's pretty safe and secure, right? I mean, you're not going to close on any account. So tell us, tell us about things that could concern either your banks um, when you start using a payment gateway. Well, the, for, for, for us, uh, the biggest thing is that their website, um, they, they fill out what we call an internet merchant questionnaire and they check all the boxes. So their website have to be up to speed. When I say up to speed, that's from a PCI compliant um, aspect and that's not something the customer really needs to know that's up to the web developer and the third party payment gateway to guide them through that process so once their website is is deemed um secure and we vetted it then it's just we're just going forward it's just another portal for them to go through and just for some uh, statistics here guys remember fraudulent transactions as far as merchant services is concerned 66 percent and this is not our this is not our standard this is standard worldwide 66 percent of all fraudulent transactions happen face to face or over the counter as far as e-commerce it is 33 percent so it's actually quite safer to use those transactions um to do those transactions sorry via e-commerce it's a lot more secure a lot more safer than the face to face yeah. Renee. Yeah, I, I would agree with Michael. And one thing as well is the the local businesses here, we majority of them will be, um, you know, open to local customers. So it, the risk for fraud is very low. Um, I think once the websites and the, their businesses fall in line with um, what is prohibited by the government, they should be okay. Yeah, what I like about the Cam Gateway, obviously the Chamber is a client. And so... What I like about it as well is that it complies with the data protection uh, legislation that we have in place. Because again, one of the big concerns with any small business is the collection of that data. And reality is with the gateway is I don't collect the data, you know, so that's maybe Derek, you can explain that. Yeah. 
because that's a big yeah. concern of some people. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, we're fully PCI verified and, and we have to be uh, PCI compliant. I, I might add as well is that when I mentioned we're a full solution provider, we will also do the website development as well. We will also do the hosting. So it's a kind of a one-stop shop. So you don't have to go to many different uh, avenues to, to get done what you need to get done. Uh, and so, yeah, that was a very rigorous process uh, to, uh, that took us, uh, I think, almost two years to become uh, PCI compliant prior to starting Cayman Gateway. Uh, and, and we get tested every month uh, for, for compliance. Uh, and uh, so the merchant doesn't have to worry and the bank doesn't have to worry. And uh, all the, uh, our servers are local. They're all held over at Citrus Groves which happens to be one of the most secure buildings on the island. Uh, and that's where all of our 911 calls are, are held. Absolutely. Well, if there are any other questions, I see a couple of them already been answered on the chat. Um, but if there's any burning questions, uh, you can either put them in the chat or raise your hand. Otherwise, I'll probably bring this discussion to a close and just thank everybody involved and say uh, we'll be sharing We'll be sharing the presentation that Derek just made on our website, uh, Cayman uh, Chamber COVID Updates.ky, as well as the recording of this webinar, so you can refer to it at any time. So I'd like to thank Derek, I'd like to thank Renee, Michael, Thuru, and everybody else, Duncan I see and Ian I see on the call. I'd like to thank all of you guys for working with the Chamber to provide this free service to our members and small businesses in particular. And we have another series of small workshops coming up uh, free for the time being. We will be introducing some other training as well virtually, but we'll keep you updated on that. So hope everyone has a good afternoon. Thank you for uh, attending this webinar and I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Mike, thank, thank you, you all, everyone. guys. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Have a good